Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Rogue ST Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson and this is your Golf Central update. Opening round of the Wells Fargo Championship at TPC Potomac and defending champion and three-time winner of this event, Rory McIlroy, off to a good start with his opening round of three under 67. He was four under through his opening six holes, that double bogey on four, but overall he was happy with his round as he joined our Rex Hoggard. Thank you very much, Rory. Eventful 67, how do you process the things you obviously did well out there versus maybe some of the things you need to clean up? Yeah, um, I mean, seven birdies around this place is, is really good. Um, you know, the two bogeys, you know, I got a flyer out of the semi-rough on the 11th hole, our second hole of the day, and, you know, missed it in that left bunker, which isn't a great miss. And, you know, you know that's a par, or a, a bogey that's, you know, it's acceptable. I mean, that's sort of what happens when you do miss it there. Uh, the three putt on 17 was sort of like an unforced error. Um, sort of, I, I hit a tee shot that just didn't get into the right section of the green and left myself an awkward two putt. Um, and then hitting it on the, in the water on the fourth hole there was was an unforced error as well. So, but it's, I think this uh, this golf course it doesn't take much to make a mistake. It's it's just one of those those places that um, you know you have to just get it in the fairway, put it on the greens. Um, you know, even, you know, I was saying there, like, be okay with getting a seven iron in your hand from the fairway, then even if you're trying to, you know, you could push it up to get a wedge in your hand with driver, you know, laying back here and, and sort of just taking your chances from the fairway is always going to be a good, a good option. I asked you about Sunday at the Masters yesterday, and I'm curious, would it be more the confidence you got from that final round or just the ability to execute those shots in very demanding conditions that you took away? Uh, I think both. You know, I, I, I executed very well. I executed, I mean, I... I think I beat the field by six over the weekend. I shot nine under in the weekend. I think the next best was three. So you know, I took a lot of confidence from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I knew my game was trending in the right direction, but I just needed something. I just needed some sign that it was. And, uh, you know, that was the sign. And I took some confidence from that. And as I said, that along with the, the little bit of a, a reboot over the last few weeks is, is um, sort of got me, got me feeling pretty good about the rest of the year. Jason Day hasn't won now in four years. His last win coming at this event back in 2018. Great start for him, opening round seven under 63. Eight birdies on the card, just the one bogey as he heads into tomorrow with the solo lead. He spoke to the media afterwards. Given the run of play that you've been on, how encouraged are you by that round out there? Uh, yeah, I am encouraged. I think it's a good uh, step in the right direction. You know, obviously, I've got to give myself a pat on the back because I played some nice golf today. But... Um, you know, we got three more days after this, and I think the main goal is to try and focus and get yourself in a position where you can win. So, um, yeah, good positive stuff today. Um, get back, recover, and try and get into tomorrow's round. The work with Chris, where are you on that process? Uh, I mean, it's close. It's, I mean, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that, uh, I mean, I think about the golf swing. If in the morning, I think about the golf swing during the day, and I think about the golf swing at night. So I mean, and I, I mean, there's been conversations at you know 12 o'clock at night uh, with Chris, just because I have an idea in my head and and a certain sensation and a feel. So um, if you've been around me at that time, you've kind of it's interesting. Um, I'm obsessed with it. So and once again, I, I, I I'm. I'm to a point where the swing is really nice with the iron, I feel like, and even to a certain point in the fairway woods, but the driver, I, I really need to um, really focus on that to make sure that I'm, I'm doing the correct movement because it can potentially hurt. But um, overall, it's, it's, it's moving in the right direction. You're saying hurt, hurt your back? Yeah, it can, well, it's, it's not hurting. It's just like, it just like over time, if I do it too much and then it just gets aggravated and then um, it gets a little bit sore. But I mean, you know, that's, and every, you walk down the range here, everyone's sore at some point, you know. Well, Ricky Fowler's also been working hard to continue to refine his game, looking for his sixth win on tour, opening round four under 66, uh, with that highlighted by that eagle on 14. He also caught up with the media. Obviously still going through, you know, working on different stuff to ultimately be in a, in a better spot. And uh, I feel like made, you know, little steps of, of, you know, making lower body work better and then working on arms, upper body. This week was 
you know, we've been focusing on getting the, you know, better turn um, through takeaway and not having the arms, you know, drift and get away from that. Um, so a lot of good stuff, um, you know, just trusting and, and, yeah, there was a couple that were a little offline and, um, you know, cost me a little bit early in the round. But um, other than that, a lot, a lot of good stuff. So definitely happy with today. Rick, do, do you feel like the regression, I suppose, in putting could be due to so much work on the swing? Not necessarily. I, I, you know, putting is, is something I've, I've never, like, really had to spend a whole lot of time on. I've always had great hands and feel and saw the greens really well. Um, there's been times where I feel like I've, you know, struggled starting the ball where I wanted to, but I was also not seeing the greens properly. So, I mean, good luck making putts if, you know, either one of those are off, but if that's just kind of just hitting it and hoping. So, um, no, I'm in a lot better spot now with, you know, seeing the greens better and, and starting balls online. While Sergio Garcia, pretty eventful opening round for him. It was a pretty solid day of three under 67, made the turn in one under and then got to 10, uh, where he took a penalty shot after a wayward tee shot and didn't agree with the decision and said, I can't wait to leave this tour. It is all over social media uh, in case you missed it. Okay, well, over on the PGA Tour champions, the Mitsubishi Electric is uh, happening over in Georgia. So let's hear from Peter Jacobson and Bob Papa. Thank you playing of the Mitsubishi Electric Classic here at TPC Sugarloaf. And Peter, this is a golf course that measures 7,200 yards. It provides a lot of challenges for the players. And especially with the rain we got last night, it's a big golf course, as you said, and it requires some length off the tee, but that's not the most important thing. The important thing is the approach shots. We have a lot of forced carries to the green, so you have to be very precise with your iron play. Friday is blue out day. Uh, we'll see Ernie Els as part of our coverage and Ernie and his wife have done so much for autism. It's fun to see Ernie and his wife Liesl doing what they do with so many pro-ams, raising money for Els for Autism. And for me, it's wonderful to see a player of his level, a Hall of Fame individual, use his platform to raise so much money for this great cause. And anything we can do to help Ernie and Liesl, we all do it. All right, let's take a look at some of the featured groups that we will see as part of our coverage on Friday. Ernie Els playing with Fred Couples and Miguel Angel Jimenez, who in 2014 Miguel won in his debut on the PGA Tour Champions, and all those guys have the length to play this. Yeah, they all can hit it, and really the least important aspect here at TPC Sugarloaf is putting. Uh, you've got to be good with your irons because there's not a lot of area to miss around these greens. We'll also see Bernhard Langer, uh, Jerry Kelly, and Davis Love the Third as part of our coverage on Friday. Well, we just saw Jerry go through here, and Jerry Jerry's driving the ball really well, and he's always been a very emotional players so I look for good things from Jerry this week. Should be a lot of fun this weekend as we send it back to the studio and Anna. Thank you guys and here is tomorrow's lineup here on Golf. The Betfred British Masters gets things underway at 8.30 a.m. Eastern and then we head over for that PGA Tour Champions opening round coverage at noon then second round coverage of the Wells Fargo Championship at 2 p.m. and Golf Central will get everything wrapped up at 6 p.m. Eastern. Well we look forward to heading out to TPC Potomac tomorrow for second round of the Wells Fargo Championship. We will see you there.